plus bj1 of t and aj2 started out as 0 plus bj2 of t. Right, so now they're both moving forward together. Now as I increase t beyond this, both of these are increasing. Okay, so it, it looks pretty simple with two things, and it's harder to draw with more things. But you can look at these coefficients and you can plot them. And if there's this great book, um, <clears throat> um, I, I link to it in the notes, um, and I call it the ESL, but it's called Elements of um, Statistical Learning by, let's see, by um, Shibarani, um, I'm probably spelling his name wrong. Alan doesn't know. Um, Hasty and uh, and Friedman, who are three statisticians at Stanford, and 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 they've kind of really been um, the ones who developed a lot of this machinery, and they've got a free book online which is actually really good. Um, it's it's more technical than than uh, the MMBS book I linked to, and. It's, it's, it's basically all about these sorts of techniques. And if you want to learn more, I, 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 uh, I recommend you look at, at this book. It's, it's, it's really nice. But um, so the point is, one of the things that they do is they'll, they'll draw these plots where you're increasing the value of t, and you can draw these coefficients going forward, right? So these a coefficients. And so what you get is, at, at some value, T, so initially you get this, this one thing growing up at a slope very quickly at some slope of 1, right? And then you're going to get this second coefficient. So this is going to be a time point T2. <coughs> and so now this one is going to maybe keep growing but at a slower slope. And you're going to get another <coughs> coefficient that's also growing here, also at this slower slope. Now what's strange is you, you keep doing this and, if, and at the next step you, you find another time point T3, which is going to be T3. And at, at this point, you, you, maybe you found a third coefficient that you want to start growing. Um, and I, some more weird things can start happening. This one can grow in, in a way that's negative. And actually these, these coefficients the, the, the slopes in B can start going negative too. Um, so it gets, it gets kind of strange what's happening here. So these coefficients can, get, can grow negative or they can grow at a higher rate going positive. There's some weird, weird stuff that happens. Um, it's usually not this, this jumpy all over the place. Usually it's pretty smooth. But if you get a lot of them, they start, some grow positive and some of these grow negative. And so this, this whole procedure of tracking them and you only increase the coefficient you're tracking is called, um, what I basically described is called least angle uh, regression. And this is the kind of the basic way to solve for the lasso. Um, there's, there's one, if you just use this, there's a weird thing that happens. It could be that this, I guess something happens in the next step and this green one goes back to zero. The, the basic technique is you just keep tracing it over zero. But there's an advanced technique where you can say once it hits zero, you snap it to zero again, and it needs to satisfy some condition like this before you allow it to go off of zero. And so this will give you um, a little bit better, um, th this, will, this will actually, you, you need to snap it to zero to get the, the, the actual optimal answer here. It's a little bit trickier to implement to think about. Um, but there's, there's code out there that, 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 that can do this for you. Uh, so, and, and so as you, okay, so, so then as you go forward, you're going to, you're going to keep going for t until you've reached to essentially um, the least square solution. And at that point, um, these, these coefficients are, um, should no longer be increasing. They're all going to be, at that point, the coefficients are going to be these straight lines going forward at, at, at some point. Um, and so at, at this point, you can stop. 
right? You've run through this algorithm, you've found all these kind of these critical points, and you can stop, um, and then you've solved it, not just for one value of t, but for all values of t. Okay, so, it seems like we're almost done, except we've, we've solved, we haven't returned one value day, we've returned this continuum of all these values of a. Um, how do we choose which value of a to, um, to actually return them? And that, and that corresponds to what is the right value of s, or correspondingly, what is the right value of t? Um, so, so now we have all the solutions for every value of s and every value of t. We've got them stored in this kind of this, this plot here. Um, now we need to choose which one, and we'll talk about that using uh, um, cross-validation on Wednesday. So, um, so uh, if you haven't picked up your project, come um, and find your partners who may have gotten them or come and see them. Um, yeah, so, so I guess we're over time, but uh, it, I can answer more questions about this on Wednesday as well.